Hi, today I'm going to do a problem on standing waves. Now this is going to be a difficult problem, so an A-level problem, but this is really good practice for the basic C-level stuff. It's going to have both a closed closed and a closed open pipe, and it's, uh, it's a big one, so <laughs> uh, we'll work through it. The problem, a string 40 centimeters in length has a mass per unit length of 9 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter. What is the tension in the string if its second harmonic resonates with the third harmonic of a one meter long tube filled with 75 centimeters of water? Okay, so big one. We've got a string, we've got a tube filled with water, we've got a second harmonic, a third harmonic, we've got lots going on. So we want to start by drawing the situation and then figuring out what we know, figuring out what we're looking for. So we've got a string, and that's resonating with a tube full of water. So I've got a tube 75 centimeters full of water, and it's a one meter long tube. And there's a string that's vibrating, and it's going to resonate with that open tube, the open part of the tube. So that's kind of the situation. All right, what do we know? We know the string, and we've got two objects. so got to keep track of the string and I've got to keep track of the tube. So the string has a length of 0.4 meters and a mass per unit length of 9 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter. We want to know what the tension is if it resonates with this. And oh, it's second harmonic. Okay, so this is in the second harmonic. Now the tube is resonating in the third harmonic, and it's a one meter long tube filled with 75 centimeters of water. Okay, that seems to be all we know. So here we gotta ask ourselves, what is actually resonating? The string is resonating not with the water, not with the tube, but the medium that it's resonating with is this bit of air right here. So this string wobbling around is going to set up a standing wave in this air right here. So actually we're going to have a sound wave in air. So this will be in air, which means we know the velocity, 345 meters per second, and we know the length of that bit of air. It's 1 minus 75, okay, so 25 centimeters. 0.25, whoop, careful, 0.25 meters. Uh, there we go. Got to catch myself too. So here's what we know, and they resonate, which means that the frequency of the string is equal to the frequency of the air in the tube. All right, we're looking for the tension, so that's our goal. What is the tension? All right, okay, what are we going to do? Well, tension is what we're looking for. Tension on a string, we have an equation that deals with tension on a string we would need the velocity on the string and we would need the mass per unit length. Well, we're given the mass per unit length, so that's not a problem. We've got that one taken care of. We need the velocity. The other equation that we have for velocity is frequency times wavelength. Um, <laughs> can we figure this stuff out? Well, yeah, we can. The frequency is going to be the same as the frequency in air. So the tube, if we can figure out the frequency from the tube, we'll know the frequency on the string. The wavelength we can figure out because we know how long the string is and we know it's in its second harmonic. So I'll be able to figure this out and I'll be able to figure that out. So I think at that point we'll be set. So let's figure out the wavelength first. It's a string, which means it's a closed closed and it's in its second harmonic. So this string up here, is gonna be wobbling around like this. Two footballs. Close closed means we need a node and a node on the ends. And it's the second harmonic. So the first harmonic is just the one football. Second harmonic is two footballs. And I need to know the length to wavelength relationship. And here's the key is two footballs is one wavelength. I have two footballs, one wavelength. So the length is equal to the wavelength for this. Which means I can figure it out. The wavelength equals the length. Wavelength is 0 0.40 meters. Good. I've got that taken care of. I got that taken care of. I need to know the frequency. All right, so the frequency of the string is frequency 
of the sound wave in air. So let's shift over to that and see if we can figure out what that is going to be. For that one, so now we're in the tube and, okay, it's in air. Is it open, 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 close, close, close? Well, it's a sound wave in air. If you think about it, the air is free to move here, but it's not free to move here. So this is going to act as a node. This is going to act as an anti-node. So this is an open, closed system in the third harmonic. So what's that look like? Okay, there's our first harmonic for open closed. We go from a node to an antinode. There's our second node to antinode, and there's our third. So node to an antinode. First harmonic is just that, second harmonic is that, third harmonic is there. What's the length to wavelength relationship? Again, two footballs, one full wavelength. So I have one full wavelength plus a quarter of a wavelength. So one and one quarters wavelength, five quarters wavelength. Does it help me? I don't know. <laughs> it does, yeah. I know the length, which means I can figure out the wavelength. So let's flip this over. So when we bring the five fourths over to the other side, it flips over to become four fifths of the length. Four fifths of 25 should be 20. And what else do I know? Um, well, okay, what am I looking for again? <laughs> so I'm looking for the frequency. At this point, I'm like, what am I doing? Frequency is what? Well, frequency is going to be the velocity over the wavelength, just rewriting that equation. I now have my wavelength, so that's all good. I know my velocity because it's a sound wave in air, so I know the velocity is 345. I can solve this. 345 meters per second over 0.20 meters, and I get a frequency in air for the third harmonic of 1725 hertz. So 1700 hertz about. I now know my frequency in air, which is the same as the frequency on the string. If I know the frequency on the string and I got the wavelength on the string, I can get my velocity on the string, and then I'll be able to solve for the tension. So let's go back to this one. Frequency is 1725 hertz, which means our velocity is 1725 uh, hertz frequency times the wavelength. I should be careful. This is the wavelength of the string, and I might want to be careful on this. This is the wavelength in air. I got two different things going on, so I might want to get in the habit if there's multiple objects that are having waves on them of labeling, like I wasn't doing. So be better than me. Velocity is frequency times wavelength of the string, 0 0.40 meters. So my velocity ends up being 690 meters per second. It seems reasonable for the velocity of a wave on a string. Now I know V, I know the square root of M over L, I know the M over L, excuse me, I can solve for my tension. So here I'm going to square both sides. Velocity squared equals T over M over L. And I'm looking for t, so to get t alone on one side, I'm going to multiply both sides by m over l. So t is going to equal v squared times m over l. Solve for that, v squared times m over l. v is 690, 690 meters per second, and square that, times my mass per unit length, right there, uh, that's 0 0.009. And now keep an eye on those units. We need kilograms. Because tension, there's uh, Newton, this is in Newtons, Newtons hides a kilogram a meter in a second. So we've got to make sure we're always in kilograms, meters, and seconds. T equals V squared times M over L. What's our answer? 4,285, that is a force in Newtons, kilogram, meter, per second squared, yep. And I think we've answered the question. Now is it reasonable? This is a pretty high tension. Um, this would be something where you would not, this wouldn't be a guitar string. Guitar strings tend to have a tension around 60 or 80 newtons. And here we've got way more than that. So this is something that's extremely taut. You would have to have uh, something, a, a really solid support on both sides to get this tension. If this were to break, you wouldn't want to be anywhere near that snap. 
So it is high, but it's in the reasonable range for attention on a string. And we've answered the question. And the other answers look reasonable. This, I mean, this is twice the speed of sound. So in terms of velocities, again, that seems reasonable. Frequency was in the reasonable range. I think we've got it all, and we've answered the question. All right, good job.